Hello, I'm Kate Barbera, archivist and oral historian at Carnegie Mellon University and director of the Oral History Program. The Oral History Program records the real life memories and perspectives of those who experience the history of Carnegie Mellon. These interviews do not just inform listeners of the event's histories, they tell the story of how the events were experienced. These lived experiences intersect with poignant moments of artistic, technological, and social change in our society. The Oral History Program and the University Archives make legacy possible at CMU. We had some fabulous conversations, just fabulous. You could imagine those eight under, in one room talking. It was just great. It was one of the high points of living in Pittsburgh. I went in front of student government and I said, Aren't you tired of going home and hearing all your friends saying what great entertainment they have on campus and we don't at Carnegie and everyone, yeah, yeah. I said, we should have, we should do more, but I need money to do this. And we could do this together and we can create a committee, we can create a board and it's an activities board. My colleagues in Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh were wonderful to me. Uh, it was the city that was racist. And I know this kind of cuts against the grain of what people are saying about the Trump era and the way things are becoming more racist and all of that. Uh, at least at Carnegie Mellon, among students, you can see a significant interest in trying to hold the line on all this racism and, and hatred and so on. I think the first English word my mother got to know was the word learn. <laughs> because the Jewish word to learn is learn, learn. <laughs> we heard that word a lot. <laughs> and that is my great disappointment with AI right now, that it isn't making a more even playing field. When I showed up here at Carnegie Mellon in the CS department, there were two women professors and, you know, when you hit a point where you're struggling anyway, there's not any, many role models. You're always going to question, did I just get in here because they needed more women? Do I really belong here? And when you don't have a diverse faculty, then the entries of those faculty who are in place becomes the priority. And that's why something has to happen that you get that diversity into place so that there is a running chance of people who are underrepresented of getting some access. <laughs>